All right, my friends, welcome back to my walkthrough for the assignment. This is a re-upload of a video that I had previously uploaded already. Joseph. You see, as one of you Joseph. pointed out, right at the start of this chapter, I actually missed a collectible. And at first I was just going to make an annotation in the original video and let you know that there's a collectible there for you to pick up. But it didn't feel right, since I want these walkthroughs to be as complete as possible. His name was Ruben Victoriano, but now he exists as Ruben inside the encephalon of Stan. Ruben was brilliant, designing the entirety of the system by himself. But we conflicted over our intentions. And what happened to him? Ruben has been dealt with. The consequences of trusting the wrong people. Okay, so let's take care of that collectible now. Like I said, it's right at the start after you kill this first enemy. And the first time that I played, I knew the collectible was there. But I was so focused on getting rid of the invisible enemies that I totally ignored it and just kept going. Once again, I do apologize for that and I'm sorry I had to re-upload the video. But I rather have a complete walkthrough where... If you're struggling to find a collectible, you'll, you can use my walkthroughs and you'll be able to find them all. So let's just take care of this first guy. Wait for him to turn around and then we'll strike him with the axe. Remember that we need to actually be hiding behind here before we pick up the axe. Otherwise this guy will be able to spot us. And now before we move on ahead to take care of the second guy, here is the first collectible of the second chapter. So this is the collectible that I missed. I obtained all the other collectibles, so there's really nothing to worry about. And now you may notice a small cut here because I reused my original walkthrough since the rest of the walkthrough was just fine. It's just a shame that, like I said, I missed that first collectible. But thankfully, no harm done, and there it is. You know that he's getting closer because the, the footsteps start getting louder. And so we're going to wait until we, the footsteps start getting lower in terms of sound and that way we know it's time to attack so let's approach him now and finish him off and now we're going to get the first collectible of the chapter an audio tape which we are going to listen to it's right here something else is even more harrowing our subjects are dying they come out from the stem abruptly passing with looks of horror in their eyes. The ones that do survive are catatonic, babbling, incoherent messes that we can't properly interview. We've done nothing to the process to cause this change. It must be the ever-growing collective consciousness of the stem system. These patients seem unable to take the strain of exposure. We need more sane subjects, perhaps to cleanse the system. At its current state, the system is unsustainable. Something Mobius will not approve of. This time, only I am to blame for this. Our new prototype and beacon is almost ready. When it is, I will start its conversion to the wireless system. Even if the original STEM experiments go awry, I will show my worth to Mobius with its next generation. Okay, let's keep going. So, Dr. Jimenez really needed Ruvik, but as soon as he got all of Ruvik's research, and Ruvik clearly wasn't impressed with Mobius and their threats, but then Dr. Jimenez disposed of Ruvik, and I guess. 
that ended up costing him now didn't it so let's go to this sewer hole right here there's the light lady but she can't do anything to us yet Okay, here we go my friends, so in this section like I said you need to just keep firing, if the enemies get too close to you, I don't know why I missed that shot, but if the enemies get too close to you, they will kill you, and you don't want that, those explosive enemies, they'll kill you if they get too close, with, with a single hit, so timing is very important here. Don't let them get too close and you should be fine. The sequence in which the enemies appear is always the same. When you see the light lady pointing her light, just shoot her. Try to aim for the light and that will stun her momentarily. Sometimes you can use these explosive enemies to kill the other enemies running at you. Always make sure that you restock your ammunition in between waves of enemies and that it's very close but we got him. And if you do this then you shouldn't have too many problems, this is probably the hardest part. But we got them all and more. See like I said you can use the explosive enemies to kill the other enemies. And here comes the light lady, let's shoot her in the light one more time, that will stun her once again and she will run away. That's right, and don't come back. You don't want any of this, at least not in this chapter anymore. Now we're going to go ahead and get the second collectible of the chapter. I think Leslie can survive most things in this game really but let's head up we have to solve a small puzzle so 15 for 15 we need to these are the combination of numbers that we need to input in this safe here That takes care of this document, another scrap, and we're going to go on ahead now. Really, this is probably this was probably one of the trickiest sections of the chapter. And about the others, I told you before, completely expendable. They have no bearing on the mission. If they get in the way, you know what to do. You can save your game here if you want, I'm going to move on ahead. That cat sure is cute, I, I do have to, to give it to the cat, it's a really nice looking cat. And now we need to restore the power to the elevator, so let's keep on going. Sebastian! 
Joseph, wait. We have to reunite with Joseph. But first, like I said, we're going to restore power to the elevator. We need to find three parts and only after we place three parts will we be able to move on to the next area. So let's head down and before we progress any further let's get another collectible. Remember you need to point your light whenever you see the star symbol and that will open up a secret passage. So the combination for that box is on the wall right here. So the, remember that the pattern might be different for your game. It changes from game to game. So let's see here. There we go. I was almost going to put it on the opposite order, but thankfully I remembered. And we get another and we get another letter scrap. Letter scrap number eight. And now we can move on ahead and we're going to get the second part so that we can access a new area. And this part might seem tricky, but it's actually very, very simple. We're going to run all the way down this corridor. And I don't know about you guys, but so far I would say that the assignment... The atmosphere in the assignment is actually more tense than in the main campaign of the game. I think part of the reason is the fact that Kidman really doesn't have any weapons. She, rare, she rarely gets any weapons. And as such, that makes you feel a lot more vulnerable. That's my opinion. Okay, as soon as this trauma jumps out, we're going to wait for him to notice us. And now run forward and go through this passage right here. And we're going to wait a little bit. The trauma will run past us. Leaving the coast clear, and now we are going to get out of here. But keep in mind that as soon as you try to open this gate, the trauma will try to get inside this room, and we will, and we're going to hide. We don't have any weapons to battle this trauma, so don't even try it. And we're going to hide in here wait for the trauma to go around and once he leaves we can safely get out of here so let's just wait like i said it's really interesting that in kidman's campaign we have to use this hide and seek strategy for a good part of the chapter it just makes things more interesting in my opinion because for me the main campaign of the evil within it wasn't really that dense or scary it was more gory than anything else you know it was there were quite a, a lot of violent scenes i think and there was a lot of violence and like i said the game was very gory lots of blood guts and so on but and the atmosphere was good, you know. But I feel that in the assignment you feel more vulnerable. And that makes for a better experience in games like this. Especially because you don't have uh, as much ammunition and as many resources as you end up having in the main campaign of the game. So I really think they did a good job here. For the most part. I still don't get the snails with the light, but that's a completely different subject. And speaking of snails, we're going to get another one pretty soon. But 
before we do that, we're going to get the last part so that we can fix the elevator. Let's just go on ahead. Ruvik is already trying to put a stop to our plans, but we're going to hide here. We're just going to patiently wait. And here he comes already. A haunted walks into this room. But there's a trap on the floor that you might not see, but it's there. You can see the holes on the ground. So we're going to catch the haunted's attention. Hello. Good morning, sir. And we're going to wait for him to walk right to the trap. And there we go. He gets impaled. And now we're going to use this bottle to impale the other to haunt it. Throw it against the barrels over there. And hopefully both of them. The haunted will walk in. Oh, are you kidding me? Did you see that? The female haunted was standing on one of the traps, but instead of impaling her, it lifted her up in the air and she got out of the trap. And she survived. You can actually get a trophy if you impale all of the enemies here. I, I got the trophy uh, on a previous run, but. That was really silly, she should have been impaled and she wasn't. Well, I guess I'll have to sneak past this area. It's not a big deal, but... You all saw it, right? She, she got pushed up by the trap and got out of arm's way that way. Can't use the trap again. That's a shame. Well, I'm just going to call out to her. She'll come and check and I'll sneak out while she while she investigates. Too late for you, dummy. I'm out of here. Bye-bye. That was really silly, though. But, oh well. It happens and you have to improvise in these situations. And I'm glad that we found a way. But let's keep going now. You just knew these guys were all going to come out. But, thankfully they don't follow us and we can get out of there before they do anything. So place the last part right in the center. There we go. And now let's reunite with poor Joseph who's been alone all this time and he needs assistance. As you can see the haunted go back to their cages so they're good. Before we do that, let's listen to another audio tape. It's right here in the corner, it's kind of easy to miss it. Today was something truly surprising. He was one of the last groups of test subjects. Just another patient I expected to babble and maybe even die. Patient 105, Leslie Withers. Reuben had singled him out as a useless subject, but he must have known. He knew I would read his notes. What else was Reuben lying to me about? But this Leslie, he emerged cognate, calm, and able to report fully what he had experienced inside. His unique pathology allowed him to successfully navigate his STEM experience with little repercussion. They know nothing of his existence, but no doubt he is the key. If we all share the consciousness, then with him, I too should be able to experience the stem, potentially even suppress the more unsavory aspects of it. With him, I can be the master of the very technology I helped create. Mobius will see my worth and let me rise even higher in their ranks. Joseph, you're all right. You too, thank God. Any sign of Sebastian? Nothing. Maybe we can go back and look for him. No. I mean, let's just get out of here first, then we can worry about Sebastian. Can we open this gate? I doubt you and I are strong enough. <laughs> Joseph, watch yourself. I'll be fine. Quick, look around, see if there's another way out. 
Okay, before we look around, we're actually going to get the last collectible. We have to travel all the way back. The last collectible for this segment, at least. Let's pick it up. There we go. And this is actually going to conclude this episode, my friends. In the next part, we'll continue exploring this area and move further ahead with the plot. I'm glad that we're beginning to understand how the system works a little bit better. They still don't explain how Sebastian and Joseph got attached to the machine in the first place though, but we'll see. So thank you so much for watching my friends, and I'll be back with the next part soon. Take care.